this segment of the Women of Poplar Forest. We are talking about Martha Jefferson Randolph, the daughter of Thomas and Martha, who survived to adulthood and on after Jefferson's death. Martha's life changed very drastically. After her mother died, she became a constant companion to her grief-stricken father, who was uh, devastated at the loss of his wife and soulmate. And then two years later, Martha's life changed very drastically again. Jefferson was offered a post in France as the plenipotentiary when Benjamin Franklin uh, would step down. So Jefferson is making plans to sail to France and he wants to take his daughter Martha with him. Uh, so uh, Martha will soon find herself at a French convent, the Royal de Panthamont, and at the age of 12, she is learning French. She's meeting uh, young girls from different countries, and some of these friends will be her lifelong friends, and they will write to each other over their lifetime. So Martha's formative years were spent in and around Paris from the age of 12 through the age of 17. And in 1789, uh, the shots of the French Revolution are being heard, and Jefferson comes home. He thought for a short visit, but it was for good. Uh, Martha's, Martha's life changed again, and, and how? Even though she was a very cosmopolitan young woman, she must have been by now and very well educated. Within six months of coming home, she is married to her third cousin, Thomas Mann Randolph, and taking care of the plantation at Edge Hill. By 1809, when Thomas Jefferson retires from the presidency and retires to Monticello, to his family, his farm, and his books, uh, Martha is taking care of two plantations, Edge Hill and Monticello as well. Over 27 years, Martha will give birth to 12 children. 11 of them will live to adulthood. Uh, Martha, being one of the best educated women in the state, will educate her own children in the South Square Room at Monticello. Well, being that Monticello is now the curiosity of the neighborhood, when Jefferson wants to get away from the news and noise of Monticello, he will come here to Poplar Forest to live the life of a hermit. But Martha, Martha stuck at Monticello with the crowds and taking care of that plantation. She was able to come here for three times um, during uh, the time that her father would be coming here. Uh, those times must have been a really nice uh, rest and uh, respite from all of the noise at Monticello. And even if she had to do work and take care of the house here at Poplar Forest, it was on a, a much lesser, lesser uh, scale than at Monticello. One visit while Martha was here at Poplar Forest and one of her young older daughters, uh, Ellen, is taking care of Monticello. Ellen writes to her mother that uh, Martha had been saved. You have been saved from many disagreeable intrusions we have had several large parties from the Springs, and a coach and four is by no means an uncommon sight at the door. Martha did like it here at Poplar Forest, and she also liked the neighbors. She wrote home, it is strange to say we are as much interrupted by company here as at Monticello. The neighborhood is really an excellent one, and it being known that my visits are short, the neighbors all crowd in to see us and entertain us. She found uh, Poplar Forest in Bedford County, a beautiful and flourishing part of the country, and their devotion to my dear father makes me very partial to it. Uh, a friend of the family, Peachy Gil Gilmer, described Martha as a most accomplished woman. She was tall and loosely made, awkward, frank, and eloquent, with a devotion to the instruction of her children. He found her one of the most interesting persons of the age. But for all of Martha's accomplishments, once her father died, she became almost a gypsy, moving from child to child because Monticello had been sold. So she lived out the rest of her life with her children that lived in Boston, Washington, D.C., and then her own home, Edge Hill, in Albemarle County. She died at Edge Hill 
On October the 10th, 1836, she was 64 years old. She is buried in the Monticello graveyard and in death as in life, she is between her husband and her father.